Hey everyone, Noodle here. No, really, there I am, behind that giant turkey. Hi, I'm here in my beautiful new house, and I wish I had a happy story to tell, but there's a dark secret lurking upstairs. What is that sound echoing through the empty halls and the dusty rooms of the three more stories above me? Oh yeah, it's Bethesda laughing about selling us a prefab that's way too big to decorate with the camp budget we're given. Ladies and gentlemen, the glorious, the beautiful, the ever-teasing bane of my existence, the Woodland Retreat. This building is by far the most attractive piece of architecture offered in the game as a prefab and it makes it all the more difficult to complain about it. I want it to work. I want it in all its glory. This house comes around in the atomic shop pretty often. You'll see it as a standalone item, as part of the Woodland Retreat bundle, and I got it yesterday as part of the Woodland Hideaway bundle, which is really four bundles mushed together. It's actually pretty amazing. I have no complaints about all the beautiful camp items that I got with this deal. If only I had a place to display them. Seeing it in person and doing the first walkthrough, I was blown away by the design and the delivery. The wood textures, the wallpaper, the recessed windows, that spiral staircase. Oh my god, I love everything about this house. I want it. I want it in real life. I already furnished the whole thing in my mind. But I was immediately plagued with doubts. Can I even furnish this thing? How much actual camp space does it take up? Is it terrain friendly being so big? Here's the problem, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but this thing is too big to be practical. So just how big is it? Well, let's jump down to my shelter and see, shall we? Let's set up some of the buildings we all know and love that I already demoed on this show. We'll start small, the Dirty Den, one of our tiniest prefabs. Okay, not much to look at, but here's the tool shed. Just one step up, but remember how last week I made an actual home out of it? It's small, but it's cute and totally livable. Here's the sipping station, another one I did recently. Made a whole Dyna car out of it, and out of other train cars like it. Still too small for your taste? How about my personal favorite, the Iron Mountain Anvil? Not too big, not too small. I use it as my antique shop camp. I'm sure you recognize it from other videos. Love this prefab. This was perfection. But hey, maybe you're a three-story brownstone type person. No problem. Here we have what for the longest time was the biggest prefab in the game, the Wildwood Tavern. And this is where I think they should have stopped. This is a large structure with three stories and balcony space. But they took it a bit further with the Hunter's Lodge and its dilapidated cousin, the Raider Lodge. You may have seen my video on that one too. Maxed out my budget on that build, but it looked really cool. And then there's this thing. Now someone please tell me why this was necessary. Up top on the surface, I was not able to place it on that hillside property that I used to demo the large bases, or any other property with an incline really. The base here is okay, it's not too difficult to work with, but because of its sheer size, you're limited to more or less a flat piece of ground. And even here, I had to move and rotate it a bunch just to get the stairs to not float. I never did, I had to hide that little float area with plants. Another curiosity about this prefab is that because it's so large, the game render can't actually keep up with it. So if you want to move it just a couple of inches, a task that's mindless for any other prefab, here you actually have to store it and deploy it again. Otherwise it twitches and glitches all over the place and will cause the screen to freeze for a few seconds at a time. Annoying, but not a deal breaker. Space-wise, it fits into our camp perimeter, but just Barely. It's quite comical, actually. You can place some defenses and maybe allies or trees near the house, but there's really no room for anything else. Though, to be fair, with this monstrosity on your campground, you don't need anything else. 
Camp budget is a sore spot for most of us. As a builder, I'm aware of the limitations and I always offer hacks and workarounds for you guys in my camp build videos like using the plastic jack-o'-lanterns or these little moss lights, which are floor decor, to get past the light budget limitation. But here, I'm all out of tricks. I decided to put this prefab to a test and decorate it as much as I could before one of two things happened. I lost my mind or I ran out of budget. So let's take a look at what I've got. As we walk through this side door, past the adorable terrace and my ally, we enter the organ room. Here to the right is my dining room, nicely decorated for Thanksgiving. Nothing particularly budget heavy here. No merges, no things on shelves. It's attractive, not minimal, but pretty basic decorating. I'm quite pleased with how the kitchen turned out. It even has a little bathroom, way cool. I love that the whole house has bathroom and closet spaces on every floor. Back around here, I started working on some hidden closet spaces and a secret door. And this is where I hit my brick wall. For me, hitting the late budget limit ended the decorating endeavor. Why bother with the other three floors, each with multiple giant rooms, if I can't even put a single light up there? This may work if I literally use one light per room, but who does that? Some of these rooms are freaking gorgeous though. I'm so annoyed that I can't play with my very beautiful and very expensive house. So here we are, three barren stories later, up in this gorgeous attic space that by itself is big enough to be a prefab. And I ask you, dear friends, who is this designed for? What is this designed for? How are we supposed to use it? One option is to use this prefab only in a shelter. That solves the budget problem and the light problem, since there's no night and day or weather in shelters. It will always be bright and none of the rooms will even need lamps. But most players report that shelter lighting sucks, calling it brutal, unflattering, and unpleasant to be in. Bye bye mood lighting and cozy stormy nights by a fireplace. Here's another setback down here in the shelter. There are many camp items that we simply can't deploy, like anything with running water. So no sinks in all those bathrooms on every floor. No allies either. No weather stations, no resource collectors. Oh yeah, and no food. So I can bring it down here, but then I lose a lot of the really cool decorating items that I'm used to. They've given us an impossible choice. Use it as intended in our above ground camp, but forever be house poor? or set it up down here in the shelter and forever be house poor, but in a different way. I'm not giving up though. I see this as a puzzle and as a challenge. Surely my beloved game company wouldn't intentionally sell me a prefab that's impossible to decorate from top to bottom on a given budget, right? There has to be a way. Spread it thin, use only the moth lights, use other appliances and installations that glow. You saw that I still had half of my budget after completing the first floor. It's obviously not enough to finish the rest, but maybe if I plan things better. So I'll just keep working on this because it bothers me. And I have a challenge for you. If you own this thing, I dare you to successfully furnish it and share your results. Please post photos of every floor though in our Discord community. If you have a video to share, send me a private message with a video link. And if you're on PlayStation, send me a friend request and a camp visit invite. I'll swing by and actually film your setup in person. If you can make this house into a fully furnished home, I will feature your build on the show. Seeing things like this has me conflicted. On one hand, I see that there are talented people working in Bethesda. This house is so beautiful, it's making me cry. But on the other hand, there's a clear disconnect somewhere in the belly of the beast. Is this designer not aware of the camp budget limitation? Was he given any information about Fallout 76 before starting this project? Who approved it? Who priced it? Is anyone even behind the wheel anymore? What do you think we, as a community, can do about stuff like this? Me, I make these little videos. A few thousand people watch them, probably not anyone from Bethesda. But now, a few thousand people are armed with a little bit more information. What will you do with it? 
let me know in the comments. I hope you found this video, mildly tragic though it was, entertaining and educational. Um, noodle pants. One half of Game Aviator. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay safe out there, vault dwellers. In the heart of West Virginia, where the shadows creep and sway, lies a land of rusted dreams, where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride, with dangers untold and nowhere to hide.